My back hey guys, yes, your back looks uh, massive, Ross. On camera, you look very muscular. Just want to take another step on that upper extremity assessment that we talked about, looking for glenohumeral joint flexion and then scapulothoracic upward rotation. So I know I had a dark shirt on the other day, and it was maybe tough to see what I was doing, so I recruited someone who's pretending to uh, have some dysfunction of the shoulder complex. It, he really has dysfunction, um, but they're going to humor me. So Ross is going to go through glenohumeral joint flexion on this right side, and I just want you to watch the upward rotation that he has on this right side. So I'm going to find the inferior angle of the scapula. So we follow the medial border down, inferior angle of the scapula. He's got a little bit of wing and not too bad, but I want you to watch as he comes up. I want you to watch the, how the scapula upwardly rotates. So Ross, just in the sagittal plane, come up with the glenohumeral joint, and then comes up and out. So I'm just going to follow him right where he goes, up and out, and down and back. So give me two more of those, just following where he goes, how that inferior angle kicks out to the side. So if he were to do a lat pull down or a pressing movement, um, anything up overhead or slightly in front of him, that scapulothoracic joint will glide nicely across the thorax to be able to distribute load through the shoulder complex and be friendly on the bursa sacs, tendons, and ligaments. If you're lacking upward rotation, it's going to put a lot, lot, a lot more strain and stress through the area, aggravating bicep, tendon, bursa sacs, you name it, long-term, even worse step. So, Ross, take a half step to your left, a uh, half step to the right. Never we'll go on camera and go by that, it's like a mirror. All right, so let's watch the inferior angle of um, this side. So, glenohumeral joint flexion, we should see some upward rotation of the scapula. Let's see if it happens. Go ahead. So just kind of follow my fingers where they go and look at the distance traveled. And I'll move over to the other side just so you can kind of go ahead. Not moving as much. So Ross, let's do right side. Whoop. Come back down. Left side. Oh. Right side. Whoop. Moves pretty good. Left side. Oh. It gets a little stuck. Ross has done a lot of these, so it might have softened up just a little bit. But, Ross, you're, you're good. You can step to your right, unless you just want to stand there and look massive. <laughs> so the importance of upward rotation along with glenohumeral joint flexion, make sure that we're supporting the passive structure in the shoulders. Doing a quick screen like that can help you assess if someone has trouble upwardly rotating the scapula. If someone's having trouble upwardly rotating the scapula, could be a fascial restriction, a muscular restriction, could be... Um, uh, inhibition of the upper rotators could be weakness of the upper rotators, uh, could be dysfunction elsewhere in the body, but it's a good, quick, easy screen if someone's got tightness in the shoulders or impairment, a shoulder impairment, uh, or just for yourself if you're kind of stuck and can't upwardly rotate. So try that one. Thanks for watching, and uh, thank you much, Ross.